In this video, we will show you how to perform a functional assessment for low back pain. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. When we are busy forming our hypotheses, we often focus on the ICD domain. On an ICD basis, we are trying to make a structural or pathoanatomical diagnosis. For example, this patient is suffering from lumbar radicular syndrome and so on. However, we do not treat a pathology, but the person in front of us. On top of that, physiotherapy and manual therapy interventions are not able to change structure. This is what surgery is for. Especially in low back pain, we are not able to accurately determine a specific structure as the source of pain for 90% of patients. For this reason, assessment should always focus on modifiable factors in the ICF domain that might contribute to our patient's complaints. An integral part to evaluate these factors is functional assessment. Functional assessment often starts with activities that your patient feels limited in or that he or she fears doing. Ideally, you have had them fill in a patient-specific complaint scale with the three activities that they have difficulties performing. What we've discussed in another video is that we're often seeing a spectrum of changes when patients experience low back pain. One phenotype at the far end of the spectrum is the tight control type. These patients often protect their spine by co-contraction of the muscles around the trunk, which leads to stiffening of the spine. So what you're looking for in particular is the speed of movement, how relaxed and freely they can move, and if they exhibit fear avoidance behavior. A good test for that, next to the PSCs, is to either throw something on the floor and have them pick it up, or to have them get down to the floor and up again. Another part of the assessment is to have them bend forward and backwards, flex sideways and rotate. This can give you a rough idea on painful or restricted movements. You can also observe if they are able to move the injured area at all or if you see excessive movement and hinging on one segment like it is often the case in patients on the other end of the spectrum the so-called loose control types. These patients often report a painful arc during flexion and or return, so symptoms felt during the bending at a particular point during a motion such as bending forward or through a particular portion of the range that are not present before or after this point. So no pain, pain, no pain. The tight control group on the other hand often reports pain at the end range. Furthermore, they might display an instability catch, so any sudden acceleration or deceleration of the trunk that often goes in hand with pain. They might also have a positive Gauer sign, which means they are pushing on the thighs or another surface with the hands for assistance during return from the flexed to the erect position. At last, the loose control group could also display a reversed lumbopelvic rhythm. So instead of extending their spine, one vertebrae after another, upon deflection, they are bending their knees and extending their lumbar spine or block to come up again. As a last step, you could opt to have your patient perform different basic strength and coordination tests, such as a curl up or the Beering Sorensen test. Keep in mind that strength tests often have limited reliability to distinguish between patients and healthy controls. The same is true for coordination tests such as the movement control battery by Lou Marioki and colleagues. 
So while these tests are good to get an idea about how your patient is moving as sort of a baseline measurement, it's really hard to call a movement faulty due to a huge amount of natural variation between people. For the same reasons, these physical factors often only show a low or no association with treatment outcomes as well. All right, this was our video on functional assessment for acute low back pain. Based on your findings, you'll want to select exercises that fit your patient's needs. Have a look at the playlist right next to me to get some inspiration. A lot of this information and much more can be found on our soon to be released online course for physiotherapy of the spine on our website studythephysiotutors.com. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in another video. Bye.